Hi. Okay, so I want to kind of review um, a lot of different concepts relating to syllabus review projects. So um, there's a half a dozen or more articles I've read um, in the past couple of weeks about syllabus review projects. So um, in the beginning, there is a famous article, um, Rambler, and the first efforts were to identify within a course syllabus the presence of information literacy or, you know, really basic, does this course require the library? So in the beginning, it was none, some, or a lot. Um, there were then efforts to, you know, prescribe the library activity. So, you know, if there was library interaction involved in the course, conceptually, you know, what did that look like? What is the nature? What is the prescribed library involvement? Um, there's a, an article written by DeWald because, um, you know, if you have a sample of syllabi, some of them will have a lot of work related to information literacy. Um, some of them will have not much. So on either side of that spectrum, if it's a lot or not much, how can you, you know, what do you do with those? So um, the DeWald article looks at syllabus um, and syllabi that don't have much but have some information literacy. Um, there's another article that rated syllabi um, from 0 to 12, um, 12 being the most information literacy. Um, if it was more than 6, it was a lot. Um, they grouped the syllabi that, that ranked between 9 and 12 together. So, you know, lots of different layers of analysis. Um, so, you know, if you have a hundred syllabi, which ones of them require a lot of library time? Which ones of them require very little? And then, you know, there's some examples of what if it does require a lot? What if it doesn't require much? Um, additionally, there's efforts to what is the nature of the library involvement. So the, in that prong of it, there might be two approaches. Um, one approach is you can start with the text from the syllabi and create codes. So professional development is an example. Um, conceptually, information literacy, you know, allows students to become professionals. Um, you know, if and when students develop their own research questions, if and when students evaluate the authority of the information they're reading. So one way to begin is to begin with the text of the syllabus and to develop codes to group the syllabi and then themes so librarians and the faculty um, you know, can assist each other in terms of library resources. Another approach is to create a rubric um, based on you know, predetermined values of information literacy. So which of those methods is better? Um, well, it might be that creating a rubric um, is time consuming, but if you do create a rubric, the rubric will be reliable because it's your creation and the rubric will be tailored to fit the needs of the researchers. Um, so, you know, conceptually, if we have a pile of syllabi, do we first create a rubric 
or do we just immediately go to the syllabi and look at the text of the syllabi? Um, creating a rubric can be very helpful because at all times we have these normative concepts of information literacy. Um, finally, another option, which you know probably was the best one, is a combination of both methods. So it might be such that you can kind of create a rough rubric and have that on hand as you immediately go to the course syllabi. Um, you know, there's a little bit, the, the challenge is though is, you know, if there's a hundred syllabi, you know, is anybody left out? So is the, is the review project geared toward courses with a lot of library involvement? You know, we don't want anybody to be left out. Um, you know, the hope is that it is a, is a thorough review of the syllabi. And, you know, if it gets too kind of theoretical, maybe it might be somebody left behind. Um, so, you know, we, it, there's some real cautions in creating the rubric because it might be time consuming. Um, but it does seem like the priority is to, number one, maintain these normative standards of information literacy. Um, but number two, just make sure, you know, it is, the effort is standardized in the sense that all of the courses um, do get the library resources that they need. So this is Donna Wells. Thank you very much.